Hi, um, I'm an anesthesiologist and uh, in this age of uh, COVID-19, we're all trying to keep ourselves and all of the people in the operating room safe. So uh, there's a number of ways to do this and isolate the patient's airway. One way that I've come up with is to use this Echolab Genesis uh, C-arm bonnet. Um, and I can show you how I fashion it. <clears throat> it's a 36 inch bonnet and you open it up like this. You find the ends of it here and it's got an elastic band that will ultimately go around the patient's neck to isolate the patient somewhat. You need scissors and you pick an area maybe about three inches from the end, uh, cut about a five inch hole <clears throat> and what I found is that if you mark the hole, you can find it easily later. So just to put any sort of marker on it um, and do the same thing on the other side, uh, about a five inch hole there, just so your arms can fit through. Um, there we go. And I will again mark that. Just so I can find it. Because all the plastic starts to look alike at some point. Um, and then we have to fashion another hole. And what I found best works is on the bottom side, about maybe about a foot up to make a small hole you can just pinch it with your fingers and make a small hole that you're gonna put the, the circuit through. <clears throat> you take your uh, anesthetic circuit and you're gonna uncouple, so you're, uh, if you, you may want to use a HEPA filter here. This is just a humidity filter. And then you, pu you, you push this, you can see how it's hard to find the hole. You push this through, there you go. and you get about eight or 10 inches through and you go inside. I'll show you, this is the setup here. Before the patient comes in, you can put this like this. This is a Richard's headrest and puts it around the Richard's headrest. Then this area comes up here and you then reattach your mask. There we go. Now um, the, the straps come out. So this would be the setup before the patient comes in the operating room. Um, and then when the patient does come in the operating room, you have all of your things set up that you're going to need, um, which are the, your endotracheal tube, a um, graph, video laryngoscope, um, eye care, nerve stimulator, and this mask. Now, what I found is that if you, you can, on certain circumstances, under certain, uh, with certain cases, you can have the patient put the mask on before the, the, uh, the procedure, um, as long as you're not doing head and neck surgery or heart surgery, um, you can put the mask on the patient and just leave it around the patient's neck. This is for post-operatively. Now, when the patient comes in, uh, the patient goes ahead and rests on this uh, Richard's headrest, and you start sedating the patient, hook the patient up to monitors, and of course you're all in protective gear. Um, you can put this on the patient's, the uh, mask on the patient's face, and it's pre-oxygenate. <clears throat> There you go, and as you're pre-oxygenating, then you can start loading your things in. Now, this is a sterile drape, so um, it's clean inside. So I can, uh, of course, I have gloves on at this point, and a gown and proper protective here. I put this alongside here. Patient is pre-oxygenating. Uh, I can also take this out. This is a number seven endotracheal tube with a, uh, a 10 cc syringe, and I can put it in through this hole here.
And then I'm going to take the suction. Let's see. Yeah. I'm going to take the suction, which is here, and I'm going to put it also in this hole. I'll take it out of the packaging turn the suction on and keep the suction here. We're gonna to try to decrease the viral load in the room. Uh, so that's what we'll do. You can use a Neptune, but you, you have to make sure that the Neptune has a HEPA filter, um, which this one does, and it's a high intensity suction. There are two suction ports. There's these suction ports here, and there's also a smoke filter. You cannot use the smoke filter because it will not, uh, it will not clear the, the viral particles. So uh, the best is to use the HEPA filter. Um, and you can't get confused and suction the patient's airway with this uh, high intensity suction. So it's only to clear the uh, viral particles from the, uh, from the bag. Um, so you can put the eye care in and the, uh, the, the nerve stimulator also alongside here. Here's the eye care going in here. So everything is now completely in, in, uh, encapsulated in this. Um, and then you go ahead and the patient is sedated by this point. You go ahead, when, you, when the patient is ready to be induced, you can go ahead and induce the patient um, and then put this bag over the patient. You can either put this inside or you can leave it outside for now. Um, then, of course, your glove, uh, your arms go through the holes here, and as you've induced the patient, you uh, hopefully will not have to ventilate the patient, but if you do, you can ventilate inside the bag. Um, <clears throat> patient is now induced, and um, you have paralyzed the patient. You make sure that the patient is paralyzed with your nerve stimulator so that there won't be any coughing. Once that happens, you can disconnect, uh, set your, uh, your mask down. Um, here's your elbow. Set your mask down and um, turn your video laryngoscope on, pick up your endotracheal tube. And this is where the assistant can actually help tent uh, the bag up. You go ahead um, and you find the patient's airway and there's his, can you focus on this here? That's his, his trachea, vocal cords, go through the vocal cords. You can come out with the video laryngoscope and now inflate the cuff pull the stylet out, reconnect up, and there you go. Now, um, you, you could also put tape inside here to you know, secure, the, secure the endotracheal tube. Um, you leave the suction on the whole time to hopefully decrease the viral load, and then when you're finished, uh, you leave everything inside. Um, now you can do the eye care, um, you know, like so and you're completely self-contained in here and hopefully the viral load is minimized. Um, <clears throat> now you can collapse these ports down here and keep your suction on. If you use the high intensity suction, this will close down around the patient. Um, and hopefully decrease the contamination in the room. So for the extubation portion of, uh, of this, uh, once the patient is, the case is completed and the patient is breathing on his own or her own, um, and you're ready to extubate, um, you go ahead and do it inside of the bag. Um, and uh, you, you have your mask, you have your video laryngoscope still in there. Um, your stylet is still in there and your suction is in there. Everything you need is there. So you'd remove the, uh, the eye care um, and deflate the, uh, the cuff. Patients breathing on their own, they may be coughing. Um, go ahead and extubate after you suction. Um, and then either the, the mask would go on their face or this mask would go on their face um, connected up to oxygen. 
leave the patient in, uh, continue the suction in here, uh, you know, uh, sedate the patient as necessary, leave the patient in here, as long as they, they are comfortable and will tolerate it. Um, and then, of course, when you're ready to go, everything comes off this way and uh, the patient gets transferred over. I hope this has been helpful uh, and I hope you stay safe and maybe somebody will be able to uh, utilize this at some point. We have used, um, we have used uh, rigid, rigid framework devices which work well in certain circumstances, but for upper extremities, for heart surgery, uh, for anything uh, in, the, in the upper abdomen, it's a little more cumbersome to do. Um, so anyway, hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully you'll stay safe. Thank you.